it has that kind of range. But on the on the topic of the diviner, one thing that we as a group might be able to do is switch to alternate forms to fuck with our divinations. I don't know if that would work and we could try and test it, but it if the, on the type of divination, I mean, if it's divination on intent and stuff, anytime we like say we try to uh, take over this weather stone and they know we're coming. Well, they'll be waiting for us. If we do this, we do that. They may know every move we make. Hmm. He's saying you all... he uses it to protect the things he holds dearest. Can we go back to the map? Sure. And could we do some checks on the diviner to see if we know anything more? Sure. Maybe. Would so you could do be... probably knowledge religion or um, arcana for that. I'll do both. Okay. Ooh, that's a thirty-six. Maybe. Religion would work, or maybe not. Nobility would work either. And nobility. 45. I like the increasing rolls. All right. So, um, Weatherstone would be here about 200 miles away to the southeast. Um, the diviner you know as Lady Bo, that would probably be what they would call her or the reference they would call here for here, but uh, formerly it would be Lady Bo Shuche. Bo Shuche. Um, other characters of importance, you know, Li Bu um, being the top general. Um, for the other locations that they're discussing here, um, the uh, so like the, the Weatherstone is here, the Li Bu and his forces are garrisoned in Dragon's Edge. The Diviner, you believe, is back with Yuan Shu in the capital. So she's real far away. Wait, is Yuan Shu not leading his army? Is he just sending them? He's not leading them from the front, no. He's leaving that to Li Bu. I mean, that's probably a good decision, but still, we should go assess. If the closest thing to us is that stone, we should go get the stone first. Well, we can't really get it. We'll just have to break it. Sorry, we can't. Why can't we get it? It's immobile. So it's it's actually it's called a stone, but it's actually built into like a altar that is in a shrine, so it can't be moved easily um, without disrupting its magic properties. If we kill the local lord, would we get control? So, I mean, the legend holds that. Um, the local lord will defend the stone. Um, and only, like, you know, in further discussions here, they say that only the lord of that area knows how to control the stone. So it's, you know, killing the lord might be enough to prevent the stone's use um, by anyone, which and might be an idea. So, hmm. question on legality and, like, so do we think this is something that you use with me? Like you have somebody who already knows the weather sphere and they use their talents through it or it just grants you all that stuff? Well, you don't really know. Yeah, there's not a lot of good knowledge about the stone. It's never been used in a war like this before. It was just an oddity like, you know, warning, hey, don't go mess with that storm. It'll summon us like that stone. Don't go mess with it. It'll summon a storm and a knight will come out and kill you. Like, we have this nuclear bomb here. Don't touch it. Yeah. So who decides who the Lord is? Um, you're not sure? Um, it sounds like the, they were probably given their position by the last shogun or of the region or the empress, like any of the titles that are like of nobility that are granted. When you raises his hand. Um, so yeah, so there'd probably be some further discussions like the, you know, can we send our ships down river? Would it be better to try to break the river, um, entrance or, you know, what about a coordinated attack on both like down the river and like in 
at the city? Like, you know, is that a priority? Where are their supply lines? You know, you expect that most of their supply lines are safe on the other side of the border, but you don't know for sure, especially once they start moving out to attack the city, they'll have to, you know, probably presumably use some, some local supplies. Line you waves his hand in the air. So Sun Suebo would be doing his, uh, trying to do his diplomatic mission, probably going to here. Um, Colomir and his knights would be offering to engage um, Libu in battle. So they offer to be the vanguard, essentially, to meet him face on if such a conflict is inevitable. But um, after waving his hand in the air a while, um, Sun Mochun will speak up for him. She'll be like, what do you want to say, Min? Well, first off, um, I'm not sure if a diplomatic mission is the best, but anyway, why don't we just name one of our people the lord of this place? After trying to diplomacy with whoever the lord is, that way the, they can't control the stone anymore. Hmm. It's possible. Although, um, as you guys are discussing, like, this plan, Melian will bring up again that um, you still have been accounted for the diviner. Surely they understand what their advantages are here, including the Weatherstone, and that uh, their diviner would likely be prepared for any such eventuality. So Melian sort of voices this idea. He says, is it possible for us to attack our enemy from a direction in which they would not expect some vulnerability that they did not account for or some, you know, some person, place, or thing that is not a personal value to Yuan Shu, but would nevertheless be key to winning this war? The Wu boy. The who boy? What about who? Who? Who's on first? So oh. that <laughs> his his name is a uh, who, as in the body of water, as in a lake. It is what my name would be in Chinese. Oh, I don't know. These golden guys, scars guys. They 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 were looking for an orphan boy named Who. So that kid probably has some like, it's probably like the bastard of the, of this guy or something. Or can, do we have an image of Wan Shu? Um, I don't have one ready for you right now, but um, suffice it to say, he's a dwarf, and this child is human, as far as you can tell. Or he could just be really old and really skinny. Wait, he has facial hair. Like he has facial hair, okay. and he's twelve. So I don't want to get too bogged down in the speculations about this, but um, that does get people thinking that like, okay, well, what about, you know, people of personal interest? Like, you know, what, who are the members of Yuan Shu's court? You know, what's, you know, tell us more about this diviner. They start talking amongst themselves and they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Didn't Li Bu have um, like a beloved woman? Who is it, a Dao Shan? his consort or mistress to whom he gives a great deal of favor. Well, that doesn't feel nice to go after the mistress. Who's, who's that? Do I know? Do we know? Um, you guys probably haven't heard the name before. You could try making a check or trying to get a bit more.
Okay. So um, you guys are trying to get a sense for this Diao Shen. She's um, so you um, so I think that Vesper knows a little bit um, that she was some highborn woman um, in the court of the Empress um, many years ago. Actually, she was born um, under the court of Emperor Udaling Lia, um, and um, the other than her being highborn and her somehow being involved in some of the kind of recent politics up there, she's not sure exactly. I, it's something about how she was, you know, Libu's lover or something. Um, Mainyu is able to guess, I guess, or just come up with a. I hear uh, the whispers of the void. I hear the whispers sure. of the void that give him the answer here. But um, in essence, um, Diao Shen was at the center of a love triangle between Libu um, and Dong Zhuo. Dong Zhuo was the fiend that um, first created chaos after Uthenling Lia was deposed. You see, what happened was is Uthenling Lia was had to, uh, sort of deposed as emperor, and as his children were sort of competing for control, um, their mothers thought it would be best to sort of bring in a stabilizing force as the Golden Scarf Rebellion was going on. There was a lot of other turmoil. Unfortunately, the person that they asked to bring in Dong Zhou was an extremely ambitious and evil man. And it turns out like a half fiend. And he basically just completely ruined the empire and tried to declare himself emperor. So when um, Yuan Shu formed the first coalition to defeat Dong Zhou, that's the one that um, like these leaders were talking about here, that they were basically part of that coalition that they had all joined together to defeat Dong Zhou, but they actually failed. The coalition kind of broke apart in infighting, largely because of Yuan Shu being pretty evil himself and lots of other issues. But uh, ultimately, Dong Zhou was killed when um, he was betrayed by Li Bu. Li Bu um, loved Dao Shan and Dong Zhou tried to take Dao Shan and one thing led to another and well, Li Bu killed the uh, Dong Zhou with his own sword. Um, so that sort of led to the eventual fall of his regime and um, their base of power. And Li Bu kind of went, um, became like a free agent after that, supporting various local factions and betraying them. And at this point in time, he's basically betrayed everyone, um, all the major powers at least once, including Yuan Shu. Um, so he's betrayed him and come back into his service once again. So nobody trusts Li Bu, but the one person they know that Li Bu cares about more than anything else is Dao Shen. So the evil way to do this is to either murder or kidnap her and blame frame Wu Shu for it, or, or whatever the current bad leader guy's name is. That would probably win us the war, but Mainyu's not going to suggest that because that's not good. Doesn't mind you, doesn't like the idea of going after family. Well, if we could get her to join us willingly, maybe she can convince Li Bu to turn on Yuan Shu. That is a good idea. I like that idea. Um, yeah. I, do we know her current location? Well, presumably she would be kept with Li Bu somewhere close by. So if Li Bu is in Dragon's Edge, presumably she's there too. So, I mean, I don't think... But he's not going to bring her into battle, right? You don't think so? But So when he leaves the city, he'll probably leave her behind. Well, Probably. Could... She could stay with the army, though, that, like, army wives are sort of a thing. But, yeah, I mean, that, I like the idea of trying to convince her. Um, I, I don't think the idea of, beyond, mind you, like, 
finding it detestable. He doesn't really like the idea of... Well, I don't... I feel like going after her in any other way will probably end badly. That's just my gut instinct. All right. Well, they've gotten more or less to the end of their more council meeting. They're starting to sort of assign tasks or delegate various responsibilities. So they... Um, um, one thing. Yes. Um, did the San Suevo accept the invitation to the collective? Um, again, he would have probably rejected the first few times, but if you kept insisting, he... I will poke him with this now. Um, I don't want to... Uh, are you sure you going on that diplomatic thing is a good idea? Well... I am half dragon. The dragons should respect that. But if they don't, or like demand a proof of strength or combat or something, you know? This. I would be speaking with the eldest and wisest of the dragons in the region, one whose honor is um, among the most vaulted in all the land. I do not suspect that he would betray me if I requested a meeting in the proper and formal way. Well, like, if they have the diviner who knows they're get, you're going there, like... This is very near by. I would be only moving a hundred miles. hundred miles. Away. That's a long way. I mean, yeah, it's... but it's a thousand miles to the diviner. Well, if you have sending, that doesn't matter. I mean, they could try to coordinate, like an attack or what have you, right? But this is much closer to your base of control. He feels like it's relatively safe, like he could make his way there with a reasonable force and still be in position to defend against an attack from Li Bu. Right? Okay, this might be an offensive question, but is your mm. sister a half-dragon? Well, of course. Why wouldn't she be? No, no, no reason. So could she theoretically be the negotiation if it's so safe? Well, I suppose she could, but Maybe I'm not sure I would her. trust her with a matter of such uh, delicacy. Well, maybe maybe something like King Dranik and his buddies, that's us, take her to do the negotiation, and then we maybe have some of your entourage, and then we send her back or something, and we go take out this weather thing. Hmm. Like, like yeah. a two for one. I must admit, I would prefer to be fighting in battle, and were I but more able to that's I would not do so. Says, well, it may come to it, nevertheless. I do have oh. within my power the capability to combat the weather stone. So any army that I head, or any location where I am, I could reasonably keep our men and women protected. Well, I was thinking with the Lloyd thing, if what if we use the Weatherstone to, to, to... I've heard of this thing called radiation. <laughs> no. Um, what if we use the Weatherstone on them? That would... Well, obviously, if we can take any of their strengths and use them for ourselves, that could turn the tide. So that's why I was thinking, like, just get one of us, or get one of us, like, named a lord, and then we'll be the lord. And fucking usurp that guy. Screw you. Try to diplomatize with him, but get, like, an imperial writ or something that says, hey, if you don't cooperate, we're going to kill you. Maybe not kill you, but we'll take away your territory and all that. Hmm. Well, as they're like, you're sort of having this conversation while the rest of the conversation is going on. And so they are sort of discussing how to delegate tasks here. Um, it sounds like for like the three main armies, they are sort of discussing having um, Colomo and his court, um, like the knights of his court, to serve as the vanguard, to sort of take the head and um, meet with Li Bu head on if necessary, 
while Zhao Zhao runs interference, basically trying to take other key locations or at least uh, pull their attention away enough to create openings and opportunities for the others. So Suebo would go on this diplomacy to the dragons first and then uh, possibly to other missions after that, unless you guys really wanted to take that responsibility yourselves, take his sister as you suggested, or if you want to do some kind of other um, infiltration, espionage, behind enemy lines kind of mission. I'm just worried that Sun Suebo is going to get crippled. Almost. I don't think it's a complete certainty. He's poisoned. <laughs> he might yeah. die on the way. Yeah, I, I don't like him going out there, even with an entourage. How long is he expected to take to heal? A few months. So he's going to be basically useless in this entire war. Well, it seems like they've succeeded in taking him out of the front line. It's not that he can't fight, just that if he does, there might be dire consequences for him personally. But obviously he's wanting to fight, and you know, if he had to, he absolutely would. Yeah. You know, has Merlion uh, not examined him yet? Uh, uh, or is this one of those in-world things where his general distrust of magic would prevent magical healing from really helping him? So it, it's a bit of that. Merlion, while you know a capable wizard and druid, is not the best healer. Um, Calamo or Calamir is actually better at that. However, um, in this case, he was afflicted with a very powerful and potent mythic poison. So in game terms, he cannot be healed by non-mythic sources. And has anyone yet used the time sphere to bullshit through their way with this? Well, again, I would allow for that kind of shenanigans to apply it's against the It's not healing. We're just making time go faster. Right, but, <laughs> you know, in the same way you couldn't kill an immortal this way, right? Yeah, like, I know. I understand. So, um, anyway, so, yes, yeah, so you guys kind of understand the basic um, stakes here and the setup. Um, it'd be good if I could get a sense for what you guys would want to do now, but if you really can't agree on anything, we can... You can discuss throughout the week and get back to me, um, so I can just be prepared. I have a fair amount of this prepared already, so it's pretty open if you guys change your mind or something, but uh, I'd appreciate if you could tell me what you're thinking. I think my um, vote would be starting, bring the sister to the old dragon, and then go on from there to the weather thing. Any other opinions? That would be good. Um, I don't know. It sounds kind of fun joining the Vanguard, too. It just sounds like that would be a fun battle as a player. <laughs> it would. Right. Oh, my God. A big I think it would be fun. Against Lee Boo, he probably has, like, plus 60 to hit. Yeah, He's but get one shot. I don't know. I just I, I just think it would be fun. <laughs> it would be hard. Would. It would, I, think <laughs> I think it would be fun. It would be fun, but it would be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it would be fun, actually. I like the idea of wreaking havoc, uh, havoc behind the enemy lines. Hmm. I also, I mean, we could. So, which could also be the mistress slash weather mission, or sorry, the dragon. Uh, I really love dragons. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna meet some I, dragons. We could. I mean, I I actually do really like the idea of trying to convert Li Bu's mistress to our side. I think that would be fucking fantastic. But it's how fast can we, can can Abju ride a horse or something? Or we could use a boat, right? Yeah, you can, Abju can just swim. Him. Faster yeah, methods to do that. I don't think I have any ranks in ride. But yeah, but we're right beside speed. a river, and we're going to things on the river. Oh, wait, I've got a swim speed, so if we're marching along a river, Abshu will just follow. I'm assuming the army would stay close, or we'd stay close for easy access to water for as yeah. long as possible. What's but your yeah, swim Abshu speed? Will just swim along. So um, and he, he has a faster swim speed than he does a land speed. Yeah, but what is it? Uh, well, 30. Okay, so it's just normal walking speed. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, 
yeah, I. In other words, I do have a, I do have the ride skill and could probably uh, uh, jump on a horse. Um. Also, does Lao Dame have like underwater waterways on here that we could use? So she does actually. That's that's one oh my God, we advantage we have. Yeah, we could infiltrate with that. Right. So you guys are aware that some of the waterways from underneath Nantagu go to the state of wild rice in the south. We don't want to go there. Around around where we're going. I mean that that bypasses the border though. So so. We... I mean, if you really talk to Lady Laudane, she could tell you that um, technically there's a. There is a waterway that leads to this well. But even contacting her is going to be weeks of messaging and that's traveling true. and stuff. Like we, if we know the map and we can immediately go and use it, that's great. But just traveling to that starting point in the mountains is gonna take days of travel. Like, yeah, it's so the fastest route to cross the border would, of course, be to go through the city of Dragon's Edge, right? Um, I mean. They're accepting refugees to go through the city. I suppose you guys could just try to walk up the front door and knock. But uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, I wouldn't have any trouble passing as a refugee, but the the wall and the city wouldn't represent any real challenge for me to bypass. Well, it might. yeah, I mean, it depends on exactly what their defenses are, right? I mean, the people here are acting like it's pretty secure, so I mean, maybe yeah, but that's gosh. hundreds of yeah. miles of wall like dragons yeah, yeah sure but a dragon can only see a mile they have a hundred dragons guarding that wall no, they do not have a hundred dragons right. then there, there is isn't a, a dragon every mile so the dragons can't always see you i just want to say this is the same argument you made when you went through the goblins and yeah, and it's the same outcome. If Lake just yeah, yeah. arbitrarily decides I can't do it, then I can't do it. I mean, no, I mean, it is totally possible you guys could just, like, assault a section of the wall or climb up or sneak past or something. Um, you are, like, a small, nimble group, right, compared to, like, these large armies everybody's talking about, where, you know, this wall was designed to stop an army, not to stop anybody from crossing. Well, I think my vote would still go for bring the dragon girl to the dragon meeting and go for the Weatherstone and then try and seduce Lou Lou's uh, mistress. What do we know about the... Oh gosh, what's her name? Lady... Lady the mistress. No, no, no. Oh, the uh, Gaucho? Yeah, does she like Libu? Like, you believe that she does. I mean, her reputation is that she's an enchantress that had enchanted both um, Dongzhou and Libu. Um, I don't think your check was high enough to know anything more than that. That was um, a forty-one. It was so a forty-one, have... not a thirty-seven. No, it would be okay. a plus four. Okay, so, so she could have power in her own right. Yeah, so you believe that she is an enchantress um, and that the real story behind this is that she was explicitly to put on this mission by her father. So her father was a um, an advisor in the court of Dong Zhou who secretly wanted to betray him and restore the empress um, and the you know current line of succession. So to do that, he convinced his daughter to seduce Li Bu and Dong Zhou and create this conflict artificially. So she might still be in the mindset of, hey, or she might be able to be convinced of the mindset of, hey, let's go Empress Wu. Yeah, I mean, she's, it seems like she's been, you know, it may be that she didn't join with Li Bu originally out of like a genuine affection or love, but I mean, all reports seem to say they seem deeply in love now. I mean, without meeting her or knowing anything about her, really, you can't know. But um, you believe that she is a trained enchantress. 
And she also has an arm of Anzar. She, I mean, maybe. Who knows? That's where he <laughs> put it. He gave it to her. I'm calling it. All right. So, so um, this is a radical concept, but the dragons believe in. Uh, crap, I keep forgetting the guy's name. The false emperor. Um, because of his religious mandate or whatever, why don't we Same. just take the dwarven dude who completely undermines his religious mandate to the that, dragons? That's not really. Yeah, that's what, what I what think. The dragons right. believe because he made his name sound really cool. So one thing I was thinking was getting our scholars to do linguistics to make someone else's name cool or something like that. Is right, it because right. he has a I cool mean, name or because he has a legitimate religious claim? So it's a bit of both. So uh, I'll explain that uh, because the prima isn't worshipped so much in the East, normally like emperors in the East don't claim a religious mandate as such, but they do say they have the will of heaven on their side, which is usually manifested by like victory in battle. Essentially, it's it's just hearkening back to the one law that you guys are already familiar with, like might makes right. So because you want you won this territory and because he's won many battles, in that respect, it seems like he has the will of heaven, and so in that sense, he has a divine mandate. But there's not actually like any other reason to suspect he has a divine mandate. Um, like Zhao Zhao said, he has some of the regalia and symbols of office. It sounds like he essentially stole some of like the, you know, the symbols of the emperor and the empress. Um, so that gives him a little credence of like claim of, of legitimacy, and that his name just happens to like sound very legitimate is helps and that's you know partly how he staked his claim but the only real legitimate power beyond any of that is the fact that he descends from the dwarven high kings which according to the law established in the north and in other places um does technically place him in the line of succession if there was like the line of the emperor had fallen and that's essentially what he's claiming has happened that in the all the chaos and aftermath after the um Uthiling Liet, like abdicated and the you know destruction of the like city in the north, the capital in the north. That now the divine mandate is with him, and he holds all the power. Um, the fact that the the emperor has a daughter that survived is not really legitimate in his mind, but of course it's a compelling argument for everyone else. So on that topic, one of his tethers to this power is his dwarven descent. If we disprove that, wouldn't that be at least reasonable to undermine the dragons? That might be, yeah. So that seems like the best diplomatic choice. Like, I don't care who specifically does it, but if uh, we send the old prince there to say, hey, my dad was the king, he's dead, I abdicated to my uncle, he's now the king, which means this guy can't be the king, and either... The high lord, I think it was, is now the ultimate ruler, or the emperor is, but definitely not that guy. Right. So we yeah. could bring the prince along for that journey. Yeah, yeah. Def we definitely have to bring him along because he's the proof. Yep. And, but do we want to... I think uh, we'd have a pretty good argument, too. I agree. I, and maybe the prince is smart, so maybe he could like find some way to disprove his name like that's not actually his name or something I, I i just really want to argue the concept of names and how cool they sound with the dragons hmm. all right so plus if we'll might is right and the prince is the triple. real successor well, we defeated the prince so we're the successors now. So we're in charge now. <laughs> I think we should stay away from the might is right argument because he's already got the might and the right. Yep. We're yep. trying to overthrow him. He's already in a position of power and has a great deal of strength. If we could just yeah, overthrow him. I understand him. that. Just the dragons go with that logic, though. Yeah, and if it comes down to that, that means the dragons probably won't side with us. Yeah. True. Well, we could... I mean, how do we know what um, Sunsuevo's like familial relationship with dragons are is, and if that's like a very important tie? It's relatively important, yeah. So his father was the shogun. Um, 
sorry, I have his father's name. One moment. Um, <clears throat> well, I think his father's name was Sun Jiang. So Sun Jiang was, was the former Shogun, and he was a full-blooded true dragon, an imperial dragon. Um, What's an such, imperial he, dragon? He was sort of considered, it's essentially an eastern dragon. Um, it's a... Uh, it's like a gold dragon. Kind of like a gold dragon, yeah. This is a Pathfinder thing. Um, I think I've linked it to you before. Actually. Yeah, no, I, you. as soon as you said it, I was like, yeah, we discussed this last time when I asked. Yeah. So, um, but that does mean that he was considered to be like high nobility amongst dragons, or at least his father was. Now, diluting his blood here, you know, with mortals is considered like distasteful like in the eyes of dragons and so he would certainly be a step down from a true blooded dragon nevertheless um he's a step up from the rest of you who have did, no dragon blood did lady wu was lady wu involved with su gu or the the bad guy here like is that our suspicion on why she killed this so you're you're asking if she was involved at all with yuan shu um yeah so you know that Yuan Shu would have wanted to eliminate Sun Jiang, like in that prior conflict, because they were rivals, essentially, right? Um, I mean, Yuan Shu was like well respected amongst the people. And Sun Jiang was respected and feared by the people as a dragon and a shogun. But um, for whatever reason, um, like you know, that he died. Whether it was Lady Mo Quan. Uh, or more, uh, sorry, um, Moguan, or if it was Yuan Shu or someone else, it certainly benefited Yuan Shu uh, in a material and political way. All right, I'm just thinking about if we can use the fact that a they poisoned your like nephew or cousin or something, you know, that's killing family. Don't so don't side with him. Hmm. Hmm, maybe. Um, so the, why don't we move to wrap up since we're a bit over time and let's start with Slevin since we haven't heard from him in a while. Slevin, Dranik. He may be asleep. Um, the gnome is down. Repeat, the gnome is down. Okay, then we'll go to Brad. Um, that was a fun, mostly role playing session. Um, definitely like the awkward moment when uh, uh, Menu uh, introduced Dranic as a uh, uh, boy toy. Uh, that was a nice bit of shenanigans. Um, and I think I'll give. Uh, my fate point to Nick for that bit of levity. All right, thanks. Um, anything you didn't like about the session? Um, it, you know, I think we just spent a little too much time deciding on where to go, but uh, uh, I think we've, you know, got over that uh, uh, eventually. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, then Nick, Manny? Yep, uh, I enjoyed the uh, session. I enjoyed the role play, so it was great. Um, enjoy meeting these guys and that Zuzu was kind of an asshole. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a bit of a, you know, a, a lot, but that's sort of what you need before you go on your next big murder adventure. We're probably going to have to kill all the dragons, kill the Weatherstone, kill the Mistress, just kill everyone. But, um, yeah, uh, I had fun. Uh, I think my fate point will be going to um, uh, Dranik, I think. He did uh, good being the king. Uh, and now that puts Dranik as next, which he can't do, so it's not good. Okay, um, well, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, and nothing I didn't enjoy. Okay. We'll move to uh, John Aradabra. 
I thought it was a great session. Um, I was kind of in the background for most of it, but that's totally fine with me. I liked the way that things played out. I liked, even though my uh, tangent didn't get uh, touched on, I like the fact that it's there. I haven't really had any opportunity to delve into my vow of poverty and in the context of the game i don't usually waste a lot of game time on it just because not everyone finds it fun to watch me count coppers but um i like the idea that there was actually something there that was even bigger than the primary plot at least for my character um mm. i think i'm going to betray my king once again because uh well Drenik was awesome uh, my favorite part was the uh, bowl of maggots when uh, what's his face Abchu denotted into the hot tub. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Then Marion Vesper. Okay. Yeah, I like all the lore and the current events and stuff i was just taking notes the entire time so i didn't have much to say uh i got a little bit confused with the side quest bit i don't know why we started that if the meeting was so so um but that was fine it was fine in the end and my feet point oh i don't know i guess i'll give it to menu for um, his wonderful conversation with Zhao Zhao. All right. Cool. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. I I am always a little bit worried when I have NPCs talking to each other that uh, they're stealing too much spotlight. So. No, it's fine. I, uh... I like when you introduce very hateable NPCs, by the way. <laughs> I really hate Zhao Zhao so much. I hate him yeah. so much. Well, yeah. Blake, we'll... Let's see. I'm giving you homework. Answer my questions and the rules thing. I need to make that character. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at that. I, I didn't... My read of it, I could, didn't see what... Uh, there's there's a bunch of them. Yeah, I know it's it's Path of War stuff, so it, I'm I'm completely fine either way. But okay. there's a couple so, of questions. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, we got Chinese New Year and Valentine's Day this weekend, so yeah, no Can't problem. Busy. It's but really time. not that big of a concern, but still. Okay, cool. Right. Well, thanks, thanks for playing, guys, and uh, have a good week. I'll see you next week, and hopefully, we'll get straight into the action next time. Would it be possible to get a copy of the map so that we can refer to it um, in game and out of game? I was. I'm still setting up the new wiki. I was going to put it up there. Um, I could send you guys a copy of it just right now over Discord or something. Yeah, uh, just pin it in the Discord. That way, when we want to look at it, we can just pull it up and don't have to keep flipping the map around. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. All right. Good well, I, I can also keep it uh, you guys on this during the week if you want to check like just from this map but uh, yeah that would be good it's mostly just for frame of reference every time we were like oh how far is it to this or where is that and things in relation because this is a new yeah, area of the map we're not that familiar with right so like if i just send you the png you can't see distances right this is why i wanted to get the new wiki set up because that would have distances on it and stuff um we don't have a version with hexes enabled So let me just sorry, look for the map. You could probably get a PNG of it with the. Uh, yeah, could you just turn on the grid the and then we can take a snapshot, like a screenshot? Although it is really big, so it might that might not work. Well, here I'll turn on the grid for now, and then you guys can um, try to get a sense for it. And it just crashed. <laughs> yeah, roll twenty okay. is absolutely terrible tonight. Does the original map have a grid grid feature? Um, yeah, so I can enable the grid in Inkscape if I need to. Um, and my file is too large for Discord. Okay, so we're gonna do it in pieces. And you guys can assemble the map on your end. How's that sound? Oh my god, it's a it's a cross. No, it sounds good to me. 
All right, I'll see you guys next week. All Hopefully right. Hopefully with new mining. I will make a new one and it will be good. All right, bye. Bye. All right, bye. Bye.